Hi, I'm Kathleen Clausen, the Artistic Director of Your Dayton Opera, and I'm so excited to share with you about our upcoming season. We begin with Charlie Parker's Yard Bird, a piece that's never been done here in Dayton, featuring Martin Bakari, who's from Yellow Springs, making his Dayton Opera debut as Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker's Yard Bird by Daniel Schneider and Bridget Wimberly begins in fact and then enters the realm of imagination. Fact, on March 12th, 1955, while watching television, the famed bebop saxophonist Charlie Parker died at the Stanhope Hotel, home of his friend and jazz patron, the Baroness Nika de Königswarter. Decades of addiction, alcoholism, a bad heart, and depression having taken their toll. After his death, his body lay in the morgue, misidentified for days. Now we enter the realm of imagination. Imagine having an opportunity to realize one final dream before you die. Our opera begins as his body lies misidentified in the New York City morgue, the spirit of Charlie Parker enters Birdland, the jazz club named after him, determined to create his final masterpiece. Here, Charlie is visited and inspired by people who have meant much in his life, his strong mother, Addie, three of his four wives, Rebecca, Doris, and Chan, and his partner in the jazz revolution that was bebop, Dizzy Gillespie. In the opera, Charlie Parker will struggle to calm his demons, write his new masterpiece before his body is identified in the morgue, and this gig is up forever. This opera searches for the music in dreams deferred and the power of redemption. Let's meet our cast. Hello, my name is Martin Bakari, and I will be playing Charlie Parker in Charlie Parker's Yardbird in what will be one of my most exciting debuts to date with Dayton Opera. Uh, I am particularly excited to debut with Dayton Opera because I grew up just down the road in Yellow Springs and grew up watching many productions here at Dayton Opera, including my first opera production ever, uh, Rigoletto, starring Lester Lynch, Ohio Zone, and my now dear friend. Hi, I'm Angela Brown from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm here at Dayton Opera singing an actual role with Dayton Opera. I've been here twice before during my career and I'm playing the role of Addie Parker in Charlie Parker's Yardbird. Hi, my name is Lauren Nash Silverstein, and I'm making my Dayton Opera debut as Chan Parker in Charlie Parker's Yardbird. Hi, my name is Sarah Stumble, and this is my Dayton Opera debut. Um, I'm playing Doris Parker in Charlie Parker's Yardbird. Hello, my name is Crystal E. Williams, and I am thrilled to be making my Dayton Opera debut, performing the role of Rebecca Parker in Charlie Parker's Yardbird. Hey, my name is Sankar Haruna, hailing from Chicago, Illinois. I will be making my debut with Dayton Opera in Charlie Parker's Yardbird. In this show, I'll play Charlie Parker's best friend, Dizzy Gillespie, who was a pioneer of jazz music. And one of the things I love about this show is that in the show, I get to help Charlie complete one of his final masterpieces. Hi, my name is Naomi Brigell. I'm singing Nika in Charlie Parker's Yardbird, and this is my Dayton Opera debut. Hi, my name is Dubois Akeen, and I am making my Dayton Opera debut uh, with Charlie Parker's Yardbird. Um, and I'm in the role of associate director, choreographer, and I'll also be performing in the show as the dancer. Is not enough. So the score is really a rich experience. It's this incredible sound world that Daniel Schneider has created. Um, he combines so many different styles, so you'll hear jazz, you'll hear bebop, which is the sound that um, Charlie Parker and his colleagues of the day invented, essentially. You'll hear some ragtime, you'll hear um, some 12-tone music in the beginning uh, that's associated with um, one of the characters, and you'll also hear like the sound of a traditional New Orleans funeral march. I mean, there's so many different um, colors uh, of, of the sound world in the piece. So it's, it's particularly fascinating and everything in it is meaningful to Charlie Parker and his life. The music of this piece is particularly interesting because it is in fact an opera and the composer Daniel Schneider is a classical composer. 
Uh, but he's also a brilliant jazz saxophonist himself, so there's a lot of jazz influence. And if you're particularly keen to the music of Charlie Parker and Miles Davis and Thelonious Monk, even John Coltrane, you'll hear some of their music quoted within the score. Uh, the singing is very exciting because it represents the virtuosity of Charlie Parker's playing. Uh, it's very uh, high. It's very um, impressive in terms of the agility required uh, and the stamina required. He basically uh, never leaves the stage and never stops singing for 90 minutes straight. So uh, there are those exciting elements, but also uh, because it is somewhat of a jazz opera, you'll hear him singing in a traditional operatic style, but also you'll hear him scatting here and there. Mika was a patron of jazz and she was really supportive of Charlie um, in both his career and in his life. Um, in this opera we meet her uh, in her hotel room that she lived in. She would have Charlie over often in this hotel room and um, unfortunately that is actually where he passed away was in Mika's hotel room. Um, and so she was the one to find him there and that is actually where we open our opera is with her finding him in in her room. The role of Addie Parker is like any mother role. She loved her son, Charlie, to almost a fault. Um, she, she enabled him a lot in his life, um, but she always knew that her son was going to achieve greatness. So she allowed him to be who he was going to be. And um, it'll be interesting to come and see all the different layers that Addie Parker is during this show because she is the glue. She starts in the beginning, she's in the middle, and she comes back. And each time she comes back on that stage in the 90 minutes it takes to tell this quick little story of Charlie Parker, she's it's full of love. It's full of love and passion for her son. One of the things I love about this show and especially this role is um, Diz Gillespie's ability to communicate with Charlie Parker on um, his virtuous nature and to basically tell him uh, about his use of drugs and to be able to get him off the drugs and to be able to help him, not to shame him, but to come to him as a friend and to say, brother, I love you and you shouldn't do this. All right, fun fact, um, Doris Parker was Charlie Parker's third wife. Um, he actually never divorced her, even though he was involved with Chan Parker, who they kind of had a common law marriage, um, even though he was still married to Doris Parker. A fun fact about Chan Parker is that in her autobiography, My Life in E-Flat, she self-describes herself as always feeling like an outcast. And a quick quote here, I did have a sense of what was right for me. And if it didn't fit into the mores of society, then society be damned. Performing Rebecca Parker, I've sung it actually a, a number of times. It's, it's a very unique role in that you hear the highs and you hear the lows. Uh, this opera shows the, the true um, emotional state of, of, I guess, the, the woman scorned, uh, especially my role, Rebecca Parker. So when you come, enjoy that, that, truth, that truthful moment. The role of the dancer in the show um, is a physical embodiment of Charlie Parker's music, his musicality, his genius, his muse. Uh, and another thing that we're exploring in this version, um, different than the version that we did in Arizona when I first um, designed this track for the dancer, is that we're trying to explore it as a kind of spirit guide, helping Charlie transition from death, from life rather to death. The opera closes with I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, the last stanza from Sympathy, a poem by Dayton's own Paul Lawrence Dunbar, understanding and acknowledging both the struggle and triumph of Charlie Parker. See you at the theater. Yes, sometimes I blue.